Alright, so hello all, I'm Shlomo Cooper for TradeNet and this is the Investors Club for the 30, 31st of August 2015, um, which means uh, this is the last day of uh, the month for August and what a month it was and what a wild week it was. So actually traders um, are going to emerge from one of the most turbulent weeks for stocks in history and we will likely need to brace for more volatility as the as Wall Street gears up for next uh, for, for this week's uh, jobs report which is scheduled to be published uh, this Friday um, so this week uh, traders actually will burst forth uh, from one of the wildest weeks ever in market history and it looks like there is no way out. The market will have to cope with another dose of volatility as it transitions from August to the month of uh, September. After two dizzying weeks in which the market recorded a sharp lunge in prices only to experience a rapid recovery as we see uh, right now uh, on my chart and this is uh, the spy ETF that tracks uh, the S&P 500 you know who would imagine at the start of uh, Monday's last uh, week that uh, after a plunge of more than 5% at the opening we will actually the market will actually close on Friday with gains and actually the S&P 500 uh, succeeded to end um, the, pre the, the, the last week with gains of about 0.8%. Uh, I'll just take my all right, my, my pointer. Also, the Nasdaq 100, after plunging more than 7% uh, at the opening of last Monday, actually five days later, and it ed ended the week with gains of uh, 3%. What a wild, what a wild, you know, a roller coaster. Uh, it was uh, the previous uh, the, the previous week. Um, so the month of August will finally come to an end uh, today, and it's going to leave investors looking forward uh, to September with the Fed at uh, at uh, at the. Uh, on, on the on the center stage um, and it's also uh, orbited by a swath of economic figures from manufacturing numbers to automobile sales uh, this week uh, we are going to also to have factory orders and most significantly the August employment report the non-farm um, payroll which we are going to have on a uh, Friday Fed bankers have been vocal in airing their desires to raise the interest rate, especially what Stanley Fisher, uh, the vice uh, the vice president uh, of uh, the Federal Reserve, um, what he spoke, what he said on during Saturday in Jackson Hall, and also the numbers coming out uh, this week will be significant as Fed bankers make their way to their final decision. Economic figures will reach their apex this coming Friday with the official American Employment Report. They are expected to record 220,000 new jobs for August, with the unemployment rate remaining low at 5.2%. So we have to understand these are solid numbers so far. Speaking about uh, the, the, you know, speaking about the strength of U.S. economy. Uh, rate height expectations have now retraced their steps, returning to where they had been for a long period of time. Uh, that means it's leaning now being towards December over September, though that uh, notwithstanding the, 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 the reality that the hike is upon us is palpable. When considering the impressive market recovery in the second half of last uh, week, as we can see right now on the chart, um, you know, interest rates could shift at any a moment, uh, even on Friday. We can have a g get a clear view that uh, the rate hike is going to be September, if we are going to have very strong uh, non-farm payroll, or if it's going to be weaker a little bit, then, you know, most of the views are going to lean on the first rate hike towards, uh, towards December. Um, the major averages, uh, as we can see right now on the f performance tables of uh, key financial assets, and ended nearly one percent higher or more for the week. Uh, if, if, if for the week, um, the Nasdaq swung from lows of of 8.8 percent to gains of more than three percent for the week. 
All right, so, so actually the NASDAQ was able to post a record intraweek reversal you know th this is one of the most uh, one of the most amazing huge uh, magnitude uh, reversal that we've seen ever in uh, the market the Dow Jones and the S&P 500 also more than recovered sharp losses for their best weekly reversal since uh, 1987 and since uh, 2008 um, I want to Right. I want to start today with um, selections from Rudyard Kipling. All right, say for famous song. All right, let's let's see where it is. Yeah, famous song. If Kipling was, as you know, an English short story writer, poet, and also novelist, he was the first uh, Englishman to get uh, the Nobel Prize in 1907. He wrote tales and sh uh, tales short, uh, uh, tales poems, um, and probably the name sounds familiar to you because of his famous book, uh, the, J the Jungle Book. Yeah, absolutely, uh, Sebastian. Sure. Um, all right, so, so let's start with uh, let's start with uh, if uh, the if poem, and you know I've just quoted a couple of phrases uh, I liked. If you can keep your uh, and just understand how this poem is so much related to what happened in the market for the past week, and uh, just think of the amazing, you know, of the amazing relevance uh, to us, although it was written uh, more than 100 years ago. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing there and blaming it on you. If you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowance for their doubting too. If you can make one heap of all your winnings and risk it on one turn of pitch and toss and lose and start again at your beginnings and never breathe a word about your loss. If you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters just the same if you can bear to hear the truth you've spoken twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools if you can feel the unforgiving minute with six, 60 seconds worth of distance run yours is the earth and everything that's in it and which is more you will be a man my son, what's where? What's words actually? You know, th th this is assets for um, the human spirit. But um, markets actually, indeed, lost their heads on Monday as stocks slide into their biggest slump since 2011, and indices reached their most oversold conditions since the you know German Blitzkrieg rolled into northern France. Now the investing community lost their head, met with triumph and disaster, risked it all on a pitch and toss, then filled the unforgiven balance of the week with normalization as the dust settled and stocks rose. Among all the chaos among all the chaos, the three day sum of S&P prices distance from its 50 daily moving average at each close um, reach minus 14.07 standard deviations. All right, this was on Tuesday. This is an an, an astounding reading, bested only by May 15th of 1940 when the Blitzkrieg pointed itself at France. While the current ge ge geopolitical backdrop is hardly sublime it's hardly the start of a world world war all right so you know so so, so actually um shell shocked investors uh, around the world got some of their swagger back by the end of the week and stocks have settled into a range over the last uh, few days maybe back to normalization but we need still to give the markets you know at least couple of days not to mention a, a couple of weeks in order for all the waves to get uh, back lower while the volatility was enormous over the course of uh, the week we will still so we still saw most of the global equity market finish 
higher on the week um, realized and the implied volatility have shot up and almost every index is right now nearly 10% from recent highs but the vast majority are also bouncing from deeply horribly oversold levels back towards the 50-day moving averages with all the chaos um, to start trading on Monday, it would be hard to imagine that stocks could finish higher on the week. And again, here we see just um, the performance of all, of all the indexes. The S&P 500 finishes in green. The Nasdaq up more than 3%. Uh, what to say about energy that jumped more than 3.5%. And, and actually, just take a look on the USO, the ETF that tracks um, the oil. It shot up almost 12 and a half percent 12 and a half percent um what's more astounding about this is that 15 percent the oil actually gathered during the trading of thursday and friday alone so up until thursday actually the oil was down for the week only uh, only assembling um, the performance of Thursday and Friday and it ended with a huge huge uh, a huge huge gains and we're going to uh, shortly see the chart of the oil and understand where the oil is going uh, is heading all right um, I, I, I want to move forward and we saw a lot of uh, a, a, a lot of bizarre things in the financial markets uh, last week with all this uh, sharp and uh, extreme volatility one of the one of the abnormal abnormal um, relationship or behavior of financial assets were the were, was the relationship between the s p 500 and the spy the ETF that tracks the s p 500 that I think it's like a real estate on each of the traders screens because each one of us is placing is making a, a, enough room for the spy to be on one of his screen one of his a uh, anchor charts we'll call it uh, that way so as far as the dislocations that we saw on monday go it's hard to describe it's hard to describe for instance so for, for instance this is a chart that shows us the relative performance of the S&P 500 and the SPY ETF, which should track the index. All right, uh, uh, we all the time, you know, I'm do I don't put the S&P 500 on my chart. I'm just putting the SPY. All right, um, uh, knowing that it represents, uh, it's trading very very closely to what the S&P 500 is doing, and also I can trade the SPY. I can go long on it. I can short it. You know, so so this is something that I'm also doing and I'm using in my. In my trading, there is no even one day I think that goes by without me taking a position on the spy for long and short. And I think each one of you need also to uh, to use to use this spy, to use this ETF, and also to to trade it. Now, um, during the panicked activity of massive imbalances between buys and sells at the open uh, of Monday or of previous Monday the largest most liquid ETF this is one of the most liquid instruments financial instruments in the world um, uh, the SPY actually diverged from its underlying value which is the S&P 500 by some two and a half percent at the opening all right so here we see uh, the chart of the differences between the S&P 500 and the SPY and just look half past nine uh, this is just the opening bell and this is the divergence actually you could have bought the SPY with a discount of more than two and a half percent over the underlying asset which is the S&P 500 now I wouldn't expect the S&P 500 and the SPY to track each other perfectly for all manners of reasons but the size of the disconnect was just impossible to ignore now as markets normalized and prices cleared we saw the enormous gap close and a return to the normal relationship uh, between uh, the two that should be around zero you know with little fluctu fluctuations uh, above and below zero and this is exactly where the 
all kind of algo trading, all kind of computers, uh, uh, co computerized machines, uh, trading machines are actually programmed to use these kind of uh, differences in order to close them. But uh, usually these are very, very tiny differences and um, and the arbitrage computers need to use m maybe hundreds if not for thousands of um, of orders in order to profit something from these differences. Uh, of course, this is a very chunk of opportunity when you see such an enormous uh, difference between uh, these two. And the automatic, the automatic, you know, the, the, the automatic trade to think about here, if you are, you know, quick enough, is just to buy the SPY which is minus seven and a half percent and sell the S&P 500 which is um, which is selling for a, dis a, a discount of only five percent of course we don't have the meanings in order right now to sell all the 500 stocks of uh, the S&P 500 uh, of the index and this is exactly where all the um, automatic programs well, all the trading machines are excelling. Now, Apple uh, was another example uh, for, you, you know, for, for all this kind of um, bizarre financial movement uh, last week. The largest company in the world so declines over 10% at the opening. This is the horizon line uh, that uh, tells us, uh, th that points us for half past nine o'clock uh, Eastern time, which is the opening bell in uh, New York Stock Exchange. And uh, Apple declined over 10% in the pre-market. All right, this is just the pre-market started with a minus four and declined till a minus 10. But, uh, I'm at the opening bell uh, last week and you know and it and it Im and around the open immediately it plunged something like 10 or even more 10 plus percent and uh, you know um the and but later in the day then the apple just uh, popped actually it closed the gap this is the zero line line see how it closed the gap and even moved to a green territory but uh, at the around noon uh, although by closing uh, it settled down with a reasonable minus two and a half percent change uh, and in my view uh, it's it's more properly represents normal volatility i feel monday's intraday apple chart is actually a good metaphor for broader market here panicked rush of selling have piled in and while we, we may not have seen lows yet the price action screamed capitulation in my view all right this is buy 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 especially if you are tracking apple and you understand that apple is one one of the most cheapest stocks in the s p 500 it's trading for only something like 10 uh, of the PE. The PE is right now around 10, very, very cheap. And this is Apple, you know, the most, uh, the, 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 the biggest company and the most exciting uh, company in the world uh, uh, today. Now, um, at a certain point, there need to be changes to underlying fundamentals of Apple of, or of any uh, asset uh, in order to sustain downward moves in price and those just not have not materialized not for Apple not for the market and as a result I continue to believe that investors picking up high quality businesses like Apple will make out very well if they can stomach volatility near them right now I'm just you know uh, staring at the action in the pre-market the future seems that we are going to get down this morning but you know the volatility is very very high uh, even if we are going to get down today right now it seems we are going to start off the day with minus uh, 0.7 percent in the s p 500 the volatility is so high that it's not the 0.7 percent we've been th that we saw two weeks or three weeks ago this kind of gap wouldn't close on a day, on one day but in this kind of the volatility after five or ten minutes we can be back in um, green territory. So there is. All right. Um, okay. 
I want to, s to, to show you another example of um, this uh, very, uh, very bizarre financial things that we are discussing right now. And there is really no other way around it you know, on, on Monday morning. Um, a large portion of US ETF market experienced a, structu a, a structural crash. Um, how else would you categorize it when an ETF like the S&P 500 equal weighted, it's called e a RSP, and I'll just put it on the screen, RSP, and this is not a mistake, this is not a bad ticket, all right, this is not a mistake on the chart, this is not just a spike, this is actually trading that was made here on the RSP, the equal weighted uh, S&P 500, and it fell actually 43% on decent volume and it took it over 30 minutes to recover now we saw all kind of bizarre things on other ETFs uh, for example the ETF that tracks the S&P uh, um, for example um, let's take for example um, the S&P small cap 600 called IJR it fell 30% at its lows, while the small cap 600 growth, IJT, fell 34%, although the underlying index was down much, much less. Even the NASDAQ 100, the QQQ, was down something like 17% in the quarter, although the index, the underlying index, the NASDAQ 100 index, which is um, NDX, dollar sign on my uh, on my uh, trading platform on Colmex um, was actually down only 9% so this is a divergence of more than 8% and we saw it uh, we, we saw it a lot um, so let, let's really so, so here is a look at our key ETF matrix that shows the recent performance of various asset classes and in this matrix we highlight the one day um, performance in percentage of ETFs at the lows of Monday morning, the performance from the lows of Monday um, to the closing levels uh, on Monday, and the performance from the lows on Monday morning through, um, f through the end of uh, the week. Uh, RSP, as you can find it here, the S&P 500 equal weight, uh, actually popped up 75% from its lows. It's worrisome that the ETF asset class could experience such extreme drops given how big the market has become. I strongly recommend against keeping active stop orders in uh, the market unless you know you fully expect them to get hit and uh, I think each one of us should avoid market orders at all time. I don't use market orders um, al always on and only uh, limit orders unless you are monitoring the bid and ask spreads very, very closely and you are sitting in front of your computer. Uh, otherwise, just you use limit orders uh, as protections as stop protections don't use market orders a lot of people got burned on monday morning and you have to understand that if the rsp was just trading for minus 75 percent there was a very very lucky lucky buyer there who actually got rsp with a minus 75 percent but there is also someone who just burned his account and because using a market order which stand the RSP so sharply, eh, 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 so sharply lower, um, you know, without any justification for that. Okay, so lots of people got burned on Monday morning, and if you were one of them, you likely could have avoided it by following these two rules. All right, um, let's take a look of, of, of the VIX, and you know, the VIX is the fear index and the in volatility markets it was nothing short of a historic week here we see the VIX which exploded right to post crisis highs rising over 100% in a week at Monday's peak generally I don't like talking too much about the VIX in terms of percentage changes it's the same thing as talking about the change in yield as a percentage change 
Um, but that said, sa- said, a doubling of implied volatility in unbelievable and nothing less, um, the size and speed of the VIX explosion was a very good indicator, in my view at least, of the stress that markets were under due most importantly to position, positioning and uh, illiquidity. All right. Um, all right. So, so, so let's move from the VIX um, to the S&P 500 and let's take a look at the technical setup for um, the S&P 500 as we head into a new trading uh, week. Uh, we are going to start the new week, the new trading week in a 30 minutes or one hour. So just a week ago, um, we warned that the inability of buyers to support the market in the 2000 mark, the 2000 mark was about the lows of the year, the lows of 2015, all right, and it's correlated to the level of 200 on the SPY. And we said, and we talked about it um, one week ago, that uh, the impossibility of the buyers to give support to the market at these levels um, would actually foresee the wild ride the market took um, last week. The sheer scope, scope of which is attested to by the huge trading range at which the market traded. Right? W- w- one of the arguments about the market over the last eight months has been the narrow ra- range in which it has been entrapped. All right? And we see here by the zigzagging lines uh, at the top of the market range and at the bottom of, the, uh, of this year's market range, all right, just how tight was the range. And we talked about it a couple of times. Now, if you are going to measure, and this is measured by this, um, b- b- by this arrow, all right, so y- you will discover that the volatility, um, the strength here be- between the highs and the lows of 2015 for the first eight months of the year was about 14 to 15 points on the SPY. Now, if you will just take Monday and I circle the daily bar of Monday here on the chart, this is the same, all right? So uh, on Monday, in a single day, the market's movement range was the equivalent of the range the market has experienced the whole year around. This is huge, guys. You know, this is something that we are not lucky to see uh, every day, not, not to say every month, not to mention even ev- every year. This is very, very strange, and you know, and this is really extremes. This is really extremes waves. Uh, we are right now trying to, um, trying to walk to, to, to walk between them. Um, that stocks could post weekly gains also is a very good sign. As uh, when I think about it, it shows you that these pullbacks, even if they are very large, you still have buyers show up uh, in the short term. So it's very, very um, good things and, and, and very healthy things for, for, for the bull market and for the sustained uh, long term uh, advancing of the market. You had every chance to sell off and move lower last week, but right now the market wants to know what the Fed will do. Um, but, but more importantly, it wants to digest volatility. Um, stocks could, could find it challenging to recover fully from the impact of the recent sharp declines that sent the major averages into correction territory for a few sessions. Um, and we have to understand that the Dow Jones ended this week within 1% of correction and it remained negative for, for 2015. And even if we will take other uh, indexes, we will see that, you know, um, a part of a side of the Nasdaq 100, uh, most of the major indexes are down uh, for the year. Uh, as we can see, the Dow Jones is 6.5% down for the year. The S&P 500 is down more than 3% of the year. Moving back to the technical form of the S&P 500 here on the chart, um, on the upside, um, we will be focusing on the key 2000 point level, all right, equivalent to the 200 point level on the SPY. A breakout of this level and full consolidation accompanied by a decline in volatility over coming weeks and you can you can just use the VIX 
uh, on your uh, on, on your um, platforms in order to monitor volatility could signal a tabula rasa with the market returning back to normalcy. Usually, after such a significant crisis like the one we experienced, the market tend to test the resi resilience of the bottom uh, created. This is what we like um, to call a movement, a retest of, uh, the previous, uh, of the previous lows. So, you know, just uh, fasten your seatbelt because we may well see such a retest uh, this week or maybe the week afterwards. Uh, if the market bounces back from a retest like this, should one uh, appear, uh, it could produce a substantial bottom uh, with staying power. And uh, if you are, if you didn't buy anything, if you didn't buy Apple, Netflix, Facebook, you know, on the bottoms around the bottoms of uh, of, Mon of Monday, and, and this is exactly the, the opportunity. Uh, you know, most investors are not in front of your of their screens even to know about it and we are here short-term traders each one of us uh, I believe also is running for him a portfolio for long term and this is exactly how you can use in this in this extreme um, levels in these extreme conditions um, the volatility in order to get into some very good pick some very good businesses at very low levels and I know I took on Monday Apple and I took on Monday Facebook and I took on Monday also a AT&T and I will be able to load some more should um, should the mark just collapse back to the lows and you know if you are going to have very very strong non-farm payroll this Friday I believe the market is just going to tear apart Right, because uh, now uh, the sound of the Fed heads will be all right. We are going to push uh, the, the, the 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 rate hike button uh, on September, on the 16th of September. This is the next meeting of uh, the Fed, and you know, I just want all of this, all of this rate hike guessing game just to be in the rear mirror, for so we as investors and traders can just get back to the fundamentals, to the economy, to the profits of uh, the companies, and not be just uh, trapped in this uh, uh, not stopping, not no not not stopping. Um, guess gaming of when the Federal Reserve is going to uh, rate, uh, hike the rate. Um, I want to talk about uh, something, that, uh, about a pattern that is pretty rare uh, called the death cross. And, and you know, just tell me, just tell me guys um, if you can, uh, just press one if you know what is the death cross and if you haven't familiar if you haven't heard about it if you are not familiar with that you can just press zero so we will know how many of you have heard about the death cross pattern or the death cross um, phenomena all right so so Amitai knows about it and Jamie knows about it all right Joseph is no Blake no and Gino all right so it's about 50 50 50 let's understand uh, what we're talking here about um, if you are going to follow financial media, um, you should be prepared to hear about the death cross that the S&P 500 is experiencing these days. Now, for you that are not aware of this rare pattern, it occurs when an index, n not especially you know the the S&P 500, any index or any uh, individual security sees its 50-day moving average cross below its 200-day moving average as both moving averages, the 50 and the 200, are declining themselves. Now here on the chart you see uh, in the blue um, the chart of the S&P 500. On the orange we have the 50-day moving average and on the gray line we have the 200 moving, uh, moving average. Now you can see right now the cross um, in the S&P 500 price chart, after trending sideways for all of 2015, the S&P's 200 moving average played catch up to its 50-day moving average. Then, when 
the index fell apart over the last couple of weeks the 50 day uh, began to take a dive and at a faster pace than the 200 and bang we have right now what we call the death cross so what does this death cross mean for the s p 500 going forward and how we can take advantage of it um to uh, take you know um to take to, to take an investment idea or even a trading idea uh, of it well it has only happened 10 times in the index's history so and this is exactly why i'm claiming it to be very rare, rare. and ra the, the dates right now uh, of the cross are shown right now uh, in this a spreadsheet right now on this uh, table I made with Excel. For each occurrence, um, you th you are going to see um, the performance of the S&P 500 one week, one month, three months, and six months after it happened. Um, at the bottom of this table, we just uh, can see a a summation of all of these figures you will see the average of each uh, time frame and also um, we are mentioning here what is the average of all periods to understand that uh, these are very very different performance uh, than average uh, and on the bottom line you will see the crosses versus average you will, you will see just the differences and how they a cross is actually or the death cross is actually affecting uh, the market performance so as shown right now while performance over the next week uh, have been set at zero right and it has been positive more than it has been negative on 60 percent of the occurrences it has been a positive uh, there was a positive outcome that's extreme uh, um, the, 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 uh, the index all right um we see that going to the next month it was actually uh, it was actually negative all right uh, the index's average one month return has been minus 1.38 percent with positive returns just 20 percent of the time that's extremely negative and it suggests that investors should be prepared for more volatility in the near term that you know that spells more the volatility and more downside for the entire month of september and shortly we are going to come to september and i'll show you what usually uh, taking the history as a guidance usually what happens to the market during the month of uh, september we are we are heading there at, at more over the, ne the next three and six months however the index has been up significantly all right as we can see here and much more than the average return for all three and six months periods throughout history over the next six months uh, following uh, these crosses the s p 500 has been nine of ten times for an average up for an average change of plus eight plus eight point twenty three percent this is huge and that means we have a very very um, large likelihood um, to have you know to have another bounce from these levels if you hold and have um, enough en en enough power to, st to sustain and to stomach all the uh, current volatility the only time the index has been lower in the six months following a true death course was following the October 2000 here on the chart this is the occurrence and uh, that was when the dot-com bubble actually burst so declines are certainly not without precedent but 90 percent looking forward six months from now um 90 percent of the time the market has managed to shake it off and bounce back nicely this is very very sound figures this is actually figures that we can put on themselves uh, an investment entry all right this is a very point uh, this is a very good point to make an entry to make a call on the market on your behalf or uh, in your portfolios uh, so just think when all the blood is running in the corridors of Wall Street this is exactly where I want to make my move no y you know <laughs> 
we talk, we are talking a lot, a, 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 lots of time about uh, Apple, for example, and we all like Apple, and you know, Apple is is just one stock in a generation. But when Apple is trading for one hundred and twenty dollars, one hundred and thirty dollars, then we all have a lot of confidence just to buy Apple for the long term, all right? And if we are not taking Apple, then uh, so we are saying to ourselves, all right, I want a discount. I don't want to buy Apple around the highs, I will wait for Apple to go down to $100, right? But, but, but just think that when Apple is trading for $130, in order for Apple to come down to $100, right, it has to go down, it has to dive 25%. And when that comes, it doesn't come without fear, all right? So you have to stomach the fear, you have to digest it, you have to look behind it. And, 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 and this is exactly where the market is paying you a premium. This is exactly how, as investor, you are just uh, making huge profits in very, very short term. Um, so, as I see, there are likely to be more drop moves lower in the near term, so be prepared for them. If you are looking to exit positions, I wouldn't suggest you to do it when we have down days. Uh, on the contrary, do it on upswings instead of downswings and keep the market's long term trajectory upward in the back of your head at all time. We are moving forward. Okay, we are moving forward and uh, let's go to the economic uh, calendar. Um, last week, um, last week, uh, uh, as we can see here on the on the on the slide, uh, it was a broadly positive week for economic data. We had a wide range of uh, data came uh, in quite positive. Lots of green here, uh, which means we had better. Uh, b better results than uh, estimates. Uh, the GDP actually, uh, the Q2 uh, GDP was the biggest surprise. Um, actually, we got a revision for from a 3.2 percent to 3.7 percent. All right, so this is a huge, but also we had a couple of other very very strong uh, economic figures. Uh, looking forward to this uh, week. This week will be an even busier one as we get a wide range of indicators covering the industrial economy, construction, productivity. We are going to have the trade balance and of course the labor market with a cal uh, with with um, a culminating a crescendo on Friday the employment situation report will be the last good snapshot of the labor force that the FOMC will get before the September meeting uh, where they are going to uh, contemplate raising short-term interest rates for the first time in nearly a decade, I think. Uh, so, um, so, so this is something to, to look for. And uh, on the way, we're going to have a couple of other uh, labor uh, labor figures like uh, the ADP employment uh, change, which is a uh, before the opening on Wednesday, it's always served as a good sense sensor in order to start and feel how the big figure of uh, of the non-farm payroll is going uh, to, ca to to come out. And of course, the initial games every week on Thursday morning, half past eight, one hour ahead of the opening uh, bell. I told you about um, about the oil, so let's have a brief look um, on the oil. And I think really, you know, it, it wasn't the, the story last week, wasn't the market. The key story last week, in my view, was actually crude, which exploded higher from its close at um, $38.60 per barrel on Wednesday to $45.30 to end at, at the end of the week on, on Friday. That means gaining 10% uh, on Thursday and another 6% on Friday. This is huge. So. If we saw earlier on the performance table that the oil, and you can, you know, all the time buy and sell the, the oil, play the oil uh, by using the ETF uh, USO, it come, came to the end of uh, last week with 12.5%, this is huge, 16% of that was actually um, achieved during the trading days of Thursdays and Friday. 
all right just to just to understand the, the magnitude of uh, these uh, of, of of this uh, of this movement um as we see here right now on the chart the move was a classic what i like to call bear trap uh, as uh, we saw the oil breaking down below its downtrend then exploded higher to break its uh, downtrend the scale of the move is hard to understate as shorts were dragged over a bed of coals in nothing less than you know a, in a big fashion there was some fundamental catalyst for um, the move to happen uh, we heard the news that uh, Saudi troops would be on the ground of Yemen and that of course added geopolitical risk premium to the price of crude but the technical significance is also huge uh, I think this move could have further to go and just imagine you know how heavy are the shorts in the oil market right now i think there are more short trades on uh, on the oil futures than there are bets on the long side so should we see another wave to the long side i bet lots of short traders will just be forced to you know um, to, to, to just fold their just fold their businesses and to and, and, and to cover the shorts all right so, so we have here a potential for a very very harsh very huge even very vicious short squeeze uh, and that is going to tr to be translated to maybe to another to another rush uh, to the upside so uh, be aware and just uh, know about it uh, when it comes to the oil I want uh, to finish uh, with September and uh, how to prepare how to be prepared for September um, just to read a couple of comments here in the chat room Jamie Turner is asking Shlomo what are your views on trading um, DWTI UWTI uh, for oil so you know usually Jamie I'm just using um, the USO and I'm using uh, the UCO which is uh, the juicy ETF for uh, the USO uh, for, for the USO but you know most of the time I'm just uh, trading the XLE and I'm trading the energy names around the XLE and uh, actually I think that um, it's starting to be very very positive and very very interesting uh, for, for for the energy names and I'll just uh, pro uh, project my screens again um, last week for example we heard that Schlumberger uh, bought made a buyout uh, for Cameron CAM uh, in a deal in a huge deal of 14 billion dollars all right and this is why CAM shot up on Tuesday something like a uh, 50 percent up also we heard that Warren Buffett uh, using its a uh, uh, using its uh, Berkshire Hathaway investment company um, took a large stake in Philips 66 gas stations uh, this is a PSX that uh, we see right now on the chart so I think lots of energy names just took a, a such a, a sharp moves to the downside so so you know there are very very there are lots of um, companies there are lots of securities of oil companies that are trading in such a low prices such cheap so they can't be left on the shelf anymore and very big companies with uh, you know sound cash flow they are taking they are taking advantage of uh, these uh, cheap levels and they are just buying we saw that for PSX we also saw that uh, for CAM so all the market of merging uh, for, for, for mergers and acquisi acquisitions what we like to call as m and a is starting to heat up and uh, i bet we are going to hear more of that we are going to get more of that in coming weeks um let's let's end with september what's going to come on september and i'm just want w w want to start with um the argument and or with the statement that september is going to be is the other worst month of uh, the year so be prepared the start of business year end of summer vacations and back to school uh, actually made september a leading barometer month uh, in first 60 years 
of the 20th century. Uh, now portfolio managers back after Labor Day, Labor Day is next week, uh, Monday next week, tend to clean house. Since 1950, September is the worst performing month of the year for the Dow Jones, for the S&P 500, for the Nasdaq, also for the Russell 1000. Although the month has opened strong in 13 of the last 20 years, um, as, as tans begin to fade and the new school year begins, fund managers tend to sell underperforming positions as the end of the third quarter approaches. Uh, this is what we call um, window dressing uh, and they call uh, th this activity causing some nasty sell-offs near month end over the years. So now I just put um, the average performance during September of the four biggest indexes throughout September month. So usually September starts off quite well and it's going higher till the middle of the month and then we see the magnitude sell-off from the mid of the month till the end of uh, September. Um, one slide that uh, I show you ev at the beginning of every month is what's happening in the history of the Dow Jones in three different time frames. What, how the Dow Jones is acting, is performing throughout the 12 months of the year in the last 20 years, 50 years and the 100 years. Now, judging with what happened during August and you know, nothing can happen today to save the red of August, a sea of red for August and just see what we saw one month ago. So one month ago, we saw that August is the worst month of, uh, for the Dow Jones in the last 20 years, mo a decline of more than 1%. Also, it's not very good uh, during the last 50 years. And uh, we talked about the summer not being a very good month, except of uh, July. And uh, actually, July actually uh, apparently uh, closed with uh, in green and with uh, positive uh, gains. Now, looking forward to September. So actually, there is no other month like September that is red in all three time frames. Uh, it's red minus 0.83% in the last 100 years, down 0.77% for the last 50 years, and down also half a percent for the last 20 years. Uh, just look that uh, only in the last 20 years there were more green Septembers than red Septembers as the uh, positive percentage of the months uh, were, uh, was set at uh, 55% uh, in the last 50 and 100 years. Actually, there were more months of red in September than uh, greens in uh, September. All right, so just take that into consideration. And it was a very good bet to take short on the S&P 500 heading into the month of August. So, you know, the short trade should just keep on. Uh, just thinking about what's going to happen this Friday, should we get a strong payroll, a non-farm payroll, this should, this can just send the market into another dive uh, once the Fed is going to announce, it's going to rate, uh, to, 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 to hike the rates uh, in September. I want to make a couple of uh, last uh, comments about what we are going to see um, this uh, th 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 this uh, this week. Uh, first of all, we have to understand that just because we had a few very good days in the market, Friday's open when we get down should serve as a reminder that rarely do the causes behind such sharp lower moves dissipate so quickly. Um, that means you should expect forecasts for global growth and earnings to be revised as we exit uh, the summer. Tuesday uh, will be the day of the week. Uh, you may be thinking it's because the week gets uh, progressively slower as we approach uh, the Labor Day weekend. And just to remind you, uh, on the 7th of September, that means another week from now, next Monday, uh, we are not a uh, Wall Street is closed due to the Labor Day. We are not going to have any training. That means the next uh, session of the Investors Club is going to be 
uh, the Monday after that. Um, it's not, as, uh, but it's not going to be because of uh, the quiet week, or perhaps it's, and it's not also Tuesday. It's going to be the biggest day because of the video chip company Umbrella, AMB, AMBA, uh, reports its earnings. But that's because, not because of what you're thinking. Tuesday brings, a, I would, I would use the phrase, drinking from the fire hose. Uh, all right, there are lots of global PMI data. We are going to hear about China. We are going to hear about Europe. We are going to hear about all the global economy. Wednesday is going to start the march towards um, the August employment report with ADP's view on job creation for the month. Helping fill in the picture, um, later in Wednesday, we are going to have the Fed's roundup of anecdotal regional economic findings that is in the Beige Book. The Beige Book is out during the lunchtime at 2 o'clock Eastern time. So that means just circle Wednesday as a day that y you are going to see an extra volatility, especially in the second half of the day. So, you know, if you usually tend to trade only for the first 90 minutes or for the first two hours, just uh, be sure to come back for the last two hours. It's a lot of fun on uh, Wednesdays uh, like that. Uh, the jobs fun continues on Thursday with a Challenger's Job Cuts report. Um, this is one of my favorites, if you can uh, call it that. Uh, and uh, also... Um, and uh, let's get also to uh, Friday. The heavily uh, scrutinized known from payroll data comes out Friday. Um, the last jo this is going to be the last jobs report before the central bank's September meeting. After the jobs data build up over the prior two days, the employment data will be putting Friday's August employment report through its paces. The bombastic blonde of business will cut through the headline unemployment rate to focus on the quality of jobs created, wages, other metrics uh, that speak to the true, sta true state of the jobs uh, environment. I know I'm going to just dive into the numbers and to analyze this in order to understand um, where the US economy is uh, going and what are the chances to see a rate hike a uh, sooner in uh, September or maybe uh, also a detain towards uh, December or even uh, next year we will be much wiser um, uh, uh, towards uh, this uh, weekend uh, by the way the creation uh, uh, the, 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 econ the economists uh, expect to see a, a creation of about 220,000 new jobs uh, it's up slightly from last month's 215,000 uh, read the forecast for the important wage growth factor, and this is something the Fed is focusing on, the wage growth um, is going to show or is expected to show an increase of 0.2% and unemployment uh, is going to be unchanged at about 5.3%. Um, following that report, I expect investor activity to taper rather quickly as many depart for the Labor Day weekend, uh, which also brings to an end uh, the back of back to school shopping uh, as we know it, and we actually talked about it, uh, I think, uh, two weeks uh, ago. So, you know, enjoy this trading week. Be sure to catch some big movements here in the trading room. I know Scott and Mayor are going to show you and are going to share you she share with you some uh, big gainers, all right? Uh, uh, they, ha they will have them. We all are going to have them. The market has yet to expose the names behind this week's uh, big movers, but uh, just stay tuned here in the room uh, to get this place. This is a very, very ex extreme volatility environment, but you know, I think that as day traders, we can uh, just celebrate the volatility. Uh, it's much easier. Uh, to take uh, large movements if you just take the right wave uh, today's wave I, are just going to, uh, to to move you higher and to throw you to a much larger distance and that means uh, more profits in our pocket so have 
a great training week. I'll be here not next week because of the Labor Day, but in another two weeks. And until then, uh, have all a great weekend, and uh, we will see you all uh, later. I'll see you all later. Bye-bye. Thank you all.